Okay, welcome back to MOOC week two. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna do exercises 27 through 31. So let's get started. So let's take a look at exercise 27. Notice it says here, we are using the while statement. And so let's take a look at that. So it says, create a program that prints the integers, which are whole numbers, from one to 100. The program should be one to 100. Many rows and numbers there. Okay, so a couple things we need to think about. Um, we have two values here. We have a starting value and we have an ending value. So we want to think about how we could do that uh, using a loop. Okay, so I'm going to use again REPL.IT and see the other videos if you're not sure what this is, if you're just jumping in here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out. So I'm going to start out with an integer because that's what the assignment says. And we're counting from 1 to 100. So I'm going to go with number equals one, or I could do x equals one, doesn't matter. Uh, let's do number, and I'll say equals one. So when I start the program, number is gonna be one. And you think about the conditions. What it says over here is while it's between a one and 100, we wanna print it out. And we're, oops, real quick, and we're also increasing by one each time. So I'm gonna say, while number is less than or equal to 100. So 100, again, is the maximum. I could do this. I could say int max equals 100. And so max for maximum. That might make it a little bit clearer. So I could leave that in there. But let's just take it out for now, because if we don't need to use a variable, we can save a little space there. Um, so I'm going to say 100. And then I put my braces. And while the number is less than 100, or equal to, uh, what do we want to do? We want to print it. So system.out.print. And we're printing on separate lines. So I use print line, number, and semicolon. Now, if I run this, this is a very common beginner error. So I run this, it's just going to run forever. Okay, because it just keeps printing out one, 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 one. So inside the loop, we need to make sure that we increment number. So in Java, we can do this one of two ways. We could do plus plus and a semicolon. What that does is it increments, so it adds one each time. We could also do plus equals one, but let's just use plus plus since that's all we need. So I'm going to run that, and it's compiling. And we should see, excellent, all the way down to 100. So we started at 1. Is 1 less than or equal to 100? Yes. OK, print that number, which is 1. Add 1 to 1. Go back around to the loop. And number is now 2. Is 2 less than or equal to 100? Yes. Print it out and repeat. Uh, another common error you might see is, an like basically, it's called an off by 1 error. So if I run that, and you see this type of mistake, you know, you know kind of the error. It stops at 99. Because if I get to 100, 100 is not less than 100. Loop is ended. Program ends. So that's something you want to keep an eye out for. OK, so that was exercise number 27. Let's move on to exercise number 28. Now, in this case, instead of counting from 1 to 100, we are counting backwards from 100 to 1. So let's take a look at what that's going to look like. So create a program that prints the integers from 100 to 1. So we're starting at 100, and we're going down to 1. Okay, so in this case, it's exactly the opposite. We're actually going in the opposite direction. Okay, so our starting number in this case is 100. Okay, so then we want to go, is the number, because we're going down now, greater than or equal to 1. If so, print it. And now we're going down by 1. Or we could do minus equals 1 if you prefer that. But it's probably a good habit to get into using minus minus when you're incrementing by 1. So let's test that. And hopefully we should see a big long row of numbers. Column, maybe, actually, rather than a row. And here we go. 100 goes all the way down to one and the program ends. Okay, we are making very good progress. Let us go on to 
Exercise number 29. Create a program that prints all even numbers between 2 and 100. Okay, so this is a similar problem to what we did in 27, where we counted from 1 to 100. Okay, so let's go back and do that part first. Uh, again, this is, this is a way of attacking a problem. So what we want to do is we know we're counting from a low number to a high number. Um, and in this case, we only want to print the even numbers, but let's just ignore that for now. Let's get the basic part of the program working. And this is, I'm just going to go back to what we did before. Uh, if you missed that one, go back and look at number 27. And we're going up to 100, and we're incrementing oops, by pluses. Okay, so I can run that. And okay, there we go. So this is one, two, three. Now this is where we need to change it a little bit. It says even numbers. Okay, so I could do this one of two ways. I, I could do a really kind of clever trick here. I could say I'm going to start at two, and I could actually I could do this. I I wouldn't, but I could do this. So I can go by one plus one. So two plus two is four. Let's run that. See what happens. So I can basically increment it twice. So you can see two, four, six, eight. Oops, it stopped at 54, which is kind of weird. And I'm not sure why it did that, but hmm. interesting. Learn something new every day. Uh, let me try doing this instead. Number plus equals two. So instead of incrementing by one, we're incrementing by two. Okay, that worked. Uh, I'm not sure why the other one didn't work, but. I'm sure it's some weird Java thing. Um, so basically, I'm not even really checking to see if these are even numbers. I just know from math class that 2 plus, you know, you start at 2, and if you add 2, it's always going to be even. If you want to get fancy, what we could do is we can go back to our original program. And this is a very common thing you'll see in uh, computer programming. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if the number percent 2 equals zero. And I'll explain this. Oops. I'll explain that in a second. You can see I'm used to Python there. Uh, print it. Okay. Okay, so what this does, if number percent two, this is called the modulus, okay, this will tell us if a number is even or not. What how it works is so if I say four modulus two that's 4 divided by 2, the remainder is 0. That tells me this is an even number. Now, if I switch it, if it's a, a odd number, like 5, so if I say 5% 2, so 5% 2, that, so 2 goes into 5 2 times, and there's 1 left over. So 1 does not equal 0, so that means we have an odd number. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll go through all the numbers from, we well, you can start at 1 if we wanted to, and run it. It will only print it if it's even. And you can see how that worked. Okay, although I'm not sure why it stopped at 86. I think there's something wrong with my interpreter here. Um, but let's uh, just run that again and see what happens. Yeah, it's really weird starting at, stopping at 86. But I'm going to chalk that up to some kind of weird uh, Java error and not something that I've done. Because you can see how it's still stuck there. So I'm going to have to reload that probably. But yeah, so that's kind of where we are at with that one. So that will work. And, or you can do both methods. You can just start at 2 and add 2, or you can use the modulus. But this is a good thing to know because you'll see this quite often, and it pops up uh, in a surprising number of places. Okay, moving on. Uh, number 30. Okay, create a program that prints all whole numbers from 1 to the number the user enters. So if I enter 3, it goes 1, 2, 3. Okay, so again, this is very, very similar to number 27. Um, so I'm going to go back to that basically. So we already had this program working. So I started with number 1. I went to 100 and I printed it out. And then I incremented uh, every time through the loop. So in this case, the only difference is the number that we're counting to. Okay, so all we got to do is combine what we've already done. So we go to import java.util.scanner. 
So every time that we want to get the keyboard input. And then what we want to do is we're always going to start at one, but what we need to do is the, the maximum number that we want to go to. So what we can do is int max equals, and we did this before, reader.next line, parentheses. And as a reminder, next line always returns a string, but we need an integer. So I'm going to use the integer class and the parse, parse int method. So you can see it kind of comes up here for me. And I can just, oops, kind of I messed things up, but uh, reader.next line. Actually, I kind of made a mistake there, so I will fix that in a second. Uh, so I also need to, I always forget this one. So it is scanner reader equals new scanner system.in and semicolon. I should move this over, it gives a little more space. Um, so basically what's going to do, I'm going to put max there. So instead of 100 being the number, I'm changing it to a number that I enter or the user enters. Um, I'm using the scanner class. I call my scanner reader. And then I use reader.nextline to stop the program. So let's run that. Actually, let's see, go back here. So I have to actually print out up to what number. So system.out.print up to what number. And I like to put that thing there, it makes it look nice. And I'll run it. And you should see over here, up to what number? I'm going to enter three. And that's one, two, three. It's exactly what we wanted. So I'm counting from a number, I'm starting at one, going up to my maximum number, which the user enters using the scanner class. And then while the number is less than or equal to the maximum number that I just entered, print it and then add one and repeat that until the number is too high. In this case, once the number becomes four, it's no longer less than or equal to max. And there we go. We got one more in this video, which is good because I'm kind of running out of time here on myself. So lower limit and upper limit. Create a program that asks the user for the first number and last number, and then prints all numbers between these two. So hopefully you can see that this is a variation of the previous problem. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, actually I'm just gonna build on that since it's still there especially. And so what I gotta do here is change this number. So instead of defining it, I'm just gonna say integer.parseInt reader.next line, which we've done several times here already. And in this one it says system.out.print first, I think it was. And I think it was, if you want to look exactly like that, second, I think that's what they did. Here, let's just check that. Uh, first and last, sorry. First and last. So again, same program. What number am I starting at? Let me just space this out a little bit. So my first number is number. You see how that highlights everything. Then my maximum number is max. I could call it the start, I could call it x, it doesn't matter. Uh, and then it's gonna, again, the same loop structure. So let's do that. And okay, first number. Uh, let's see what the example was so we can match it. Okay, five and eight. So let's try five and eight, five, six, seven, eight. And let's make that capitalized. 